Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Cheltenham Festival 2024, day three. That is the 14th of March. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. I'm down, <laughs> but I'm still fighting, folks. I'm still fighting. Coming back for day three. Um, coming back for day three. It is tough going out there and I, w- I want to get to explain why I would say it's particularly tough going out there. Um, so as far as what we got for this vid for day three, day three is the day I've been waiting for. It is the day to make some money or <laughs> lose heavily. That's what Thursday is. So I'm going to put you out my plan. It's a £42. So we were 35 on, no, we were 40 on day one. We were 38 for Cheltenham plus two, but it actually went down because of the cross country. So 35, we ended up going out for Cheltenham. On day two, we are 42 on day three for Cheltenham. We are going to have a good attack at these three handicaps. Thursday's the day with the three handicaps. It's the day where you're much more likely to find a price. And uh, yes, I'm having a pop at this one. Um, So (laughs) you make your own choices, right? Uh, you look at the stats, the stats say I'm on an absolute shocker of a run. I really am, um, statistically speaking. I'm due, I'm not owed is what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, the stats don't lie. The stats say that for, for two months, those of you who've been following a long time will suggest it's the wing mirror incident. But for two months, since since the kind of we got through the second week of January, so for those two months, it's been just poor, poor, poor. Um, so... I'm up front, I'm honest, you make your own choices, this is what I'm doing and uh, yeah, I would love before I go on a on a little sabbatical uh, to uh, to turn this run around, but you never rode, um, sometimes you do. So we before we go through Thursdays, uh, I will spin you through Wednesdays, we are still good, I'm getting the days of the week correct at the moment, at least doing that's quite hard to do, so we're at the halfway stage. Um, so we laid out, uh, it ended up being, so we, it was going to be 40, two of which was Kempton. The cross country was abandoned. Um, so I'm classing it as a £38, uh, sorry, £37 a day, £2 of it Kempton. So for Cheltenham stats, it's a, it's, we've done 75 in total, okay? Uh, and we got 21.68 back. So we were a little bit over halfway. Uh, one winner uh, and that's what got us over that halfway mark but the rest of it was tough stuff so let's go through uh, the Gallagher novice hurdle uh, Mullins had the five Ballyburn won and just to be clear right, somebody wrote in the comments the day before like what's my problem why did why would I not back Ballyburn I, I thought Ballyburn was the right horse I thought it was going to win that's not why I'm about, right? So I appreciate everyone wins the bunny that uh, watches the video and understands these things, right? But Bally Burn was the right horse. But if all you do all day long is back horses at one to two, you won't come out ahead. Um, so that was the right, that was the winner. Uh, Mullins is five, came in the first five. Uh, there was a non-runner, which some people would say is inevitable. Uh, some people would say it's frustrating. So we only got paying out two places. So Il Atlantic did not pay, even though it was third. Um, Jimmy Desoy, 66 to one shot, snuck second place. So not many would have been on that. Then in the Brown advisory, um, American Mike, uh, I would say definitely underperformed. It never, he never really looked comfortable at all, um, to be honest. So um, yeah, factor file one, as, as the market would suggest. Um, and then it was Monty Starr that was got the second place. In the Coral Cup, we had a non-runner in there. We had Maxim. My eye, again, similar to America, my, I've picked a few of these this week where I feel unfortunate in the sense that they weren't necessarily terrible picks because we don't actually know. They just were never in the running. Um, so my eye was clattering fences, all sorts. Just Sometimes horses just turn up on the day and they just don't look good. And my tie never looked good if you watch the race back. It was, it was sort of being cajoled quite a way out. Langadan, as those of you who have followed the racing uh, today will have known, or yesterday, um, Langadan won the Coral Cup for the second time. Uh, literally seems to perform only at Cheltenham. And there's two schools of thought on this. Some people think it's terrible and that, you know, Skelton shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. 
I'd say the handicap has got something uh, something to answer for in the sense of the handicap is the one that's put it, marking marking the performances down. Um, and if you know it's a yard and a horse that's got previous for bouncing back, then if you're the handicapper, usually you find the handicapper lowers your rating down more slowly. But Langadan wanted like an absolute, incredibly well handicapped good thing. Uh, so wasn't in the staking plan. Uh, the other two has to go on a horse as well. Then the champion chase. Lo and behold, uh, the uh, some people would say how frustrating that uh, El Fabiolo uh, ended up almost falling and then pulling up. And then the cynics will say, well, you were never going to get the three odds on horses coming up. The bookies wouldn't let you. Um, and then uh, Edward Stone ran a nice enough race and then fell at the last when probably wasn't going to get second, I don't think. Um, I think a uh, gentleman went to me would have had him. So I think he would have been third. Um so no joy there, and uh, Captain Guinness won that one, so well done for anyone who, who picked that one out. The Glen Farkas was abandoned, and then we got to the Grand Annual. Solness uh, was about mid-pack, unexpected party, did win. And importantly, uh, apart from that, it, it won for us, which was nice, at 12 to 1. It's the first and only, in two days, double-figure price horse um, to have won. Um, if you go back last 10 years... That doesn't happen, right? So in the, in the you know, I haven't gone back for all of Cheltenham because I've been busy doing research as well <laughs> to make this video. But in the last ten years, that's never happened. In the first two days of Cheltenham, one double price horse wins, and it, and it was only twelve to one. Um, so there are definitely smaller field sizes in places this year, but the average price of the winners has been much much lower. And when that happens that directly impacts my style of betting because my style of betting is about trying to find the price. So we've only had one double, fi pri double, priced, double figure priced winner this week and I found it in the two days. What I need to order to be successful and turn a profit is to have more of those popping up. Some folk will say, well, that never happens. It does, if you look at Cheltenham Festival history, last year I think was a, was a quieter year, but generally speaking, even after the first couple of days, which aren't necessarily deemed for be big prices, you normally have a couple a day. Um, that's an average. So to have one double price horse in two days is just far beyond standard. So it doesn't really matter what I pick um, in terms of double figure prices because they haven't been popping up. Yes, there's been a few placings, but from a win point of view, you need to find the winners. Um, and yeah, last last couple of years we've managed to pick out some nice winners at th you know thirty three to one shots in the plan. We haven't got close because we haven't had any. Uh, and then these were all struck out actually, and that was uh, that placed uh, but didn't count. So it was only single on the win, and those were those. So that was that. And then let's spin down. So no winner, no no abandoned. Uh, placed so not particularly close on that uh, as everybody knows it's the most common bet in the land win win lose uh, neither of those placed so that was uh, particularly bad because I thought they were the two solid ones of the day um, and then one out of the placings didn't run well fell at the last down the field followed by no good non runner winner no good. So we got a little bit back off the Yankee um, off that one because it was a non-runner with a winner. And then the extra bet of the day managed to get to the front, but I think ultimately it was a bit of a slow start and used a bit too much energy up at the beginning and then faded in literally in the last couple of furlongs and, and finished kind of down the field um, after getting to being at the front of the two furlong pole. So that was that. So... Um, Stats wise, uh, let me just quickly check. So that puts us on uh, for Cheltenham specifically with 75 laid out this week and we've had £30.48 back. So that's minus 34.52, um, which is, means we haven't quite got back half of what we put on, plus we lost £2 at Kempton. So that's where we're at. You know where you know where we're at. You make your own choice now about what you want to do with anything I'm doing. But here's my plan for what I'm doing for uh, for Thursday. Um, and yeah, there's nothing else. It's just Cheltenham, so just point that as well. Just Cheltenham. There's no other um, things. I did have a little look around just to just to see, but nothing remotely exciting as far as I could see. Um, and the all weather or on on Hexham races. So let me talk you through this. 
because this is the day where the big prices should come in. Let's see if I've got them. Uh, in the turn as novice chase. Um, I'm a Grey Dawning fan. Uh, I saw it uh, with my own eyes win at Warwick very, very impressively. Um, and yeah, I'm not I'm not fussed about the drop down in trip. Um, I think it's got the beating of Ginny's Destiny and Facile Vega for me is a bit too inconsistent. So Grey Dawning should be the favourite. If it was trained by Willie Mullins, it probably would be the favourite. Fasal Vega, I think, will probably go off favourite. We'll see. Um, so we're just going to go in the turn as novice, nine to four, two pound win. I've got no each way angle in that race. Um, so that's that. Then we're going to get into the first of the three handicaps, the Potemps. Um, this is the one where horses have to qualify to get in. So it's useful to see which qualifying race they're running. Generally speaking, you don't really want a horse that's won the qualifying race. You'd rather have the horse that was second, third or fourth in the qualifying race. Um, because they've still got a little bit up their sleeve and they won't have been put up as much by the handicapper. So my four in terms of single bets, because I've actually got five in the staking plan. Uh, we've got Farouk Dalen, which is the Gordon Elliott second string. Um, it ran in the qualifier at Leopardstown and was second. There wasn't loads of horses in that race, but that race can often throw up horses that go on to run well in this. So that was over Christmas time. Um, this horse was coming back off a bit of a, it had a really lengthy break, but it was a really talented novice chase. So some people will remember way back, it was running really well and it was going to get framed in the brown, it was the brown advisory um, and came a cropper at the end. So uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 and that was off, that, that, that performance like that was, was a better a, a better rating than what you've got in terms of hurdle mark that was over a chase so they've put it back into hurdles here on the on the view that it could be well handicapped and it's one of two i've got that uh the amateur rob james is riding um so it, he's taken a nice nice handy few pounds off that as well because it's carrying quite a lot of weight but it will light the ground and if it runs to the level it ran out last time it should be competitive so we'll have that in um, I'm also going to go flight deck. Um, it's one of the rank outsiders and it's a stable that regular viewers would have heard me talk about quite a few times. Uh, Deborah Cole and uh, is the trainer. Chris Ward is the jockey. He doesn't tend to go and ride uh, many, for many other trainers. So he, he's the go-to person for her. What we usually talk about with them is looking at horses that are running first time in handicap chases. This one is a very different profile kind of a horse that they've inherited. It was previously trained by John Joe O'Neill, but they've clearly kept it on this season to a, to a decent enough standard. Um, it qualified in one of the Chel early early doors Cheltenham qualifying races, I think back in October. So I think it was October, possibly November, but a very early qualifying race. Again, that can throw up horses that go on to run well. Um, and then they've run it basically over better quality, better quality graded races. So it hasn't impacted the handicap mark. So it hasn't dropped the handicap mark down. It just hasn't really, it hasn't changed. Um, so I, I, although it's technically, I think, career high mark uh, for a handicap and it's 10 year old. So it's a 10 year old career high mark. It's, it's an English horse uh, and um, it's trained by a stable that people don't know very well and ridden by a jockey that know people well. All of those things will mean the price price gets nicely inflated on it in compared to its actual relative chances um but yeah i i think it's it's handicapped to put a performance in if they've got it right on the day there's no reason why it shouldn't run a nice enough race at a big price so that's in we've got prairie dancer um so this one um I th i'm really quite interested about it I d it doesn't look brilliantly handicapped necessarily um it's joseph o'brien trained horse um and this interestingly qualified from um, the qualifying race in Carlisle, um, which is not usually somewhere people qualify for a race at Cheltenham. Uh, and it's very interesting that Joseph O'Brien sent this horse over because you go roll back two years ago. This was his Boodles horse. It finished for eighth in the Boodles. Um, and it, it, this this sort of looks like a sudden experiment, dropping it up, you know, putting it up to three miles. Um so if you go back to November, it ran a, it won a really nice, uh, valuable, uh, the November handicap in Ireland, not the Doncaster one, the Irish one. Um, and uh, yeah, and the ground will be similar to what it had here. So it, it's sort of in peak form from a flat perspective. 
and they've got this thing qualified in Carlisle, which is not where, as like I said, not where people would notice. The interesting thing about Carlisle as a track, when you compare it to Kempton, is it's also got a bit of a stiff, stiff finish, um, as in it's, it's an uphill finish. Now, the horse didn't look like it was finishing off, off its race brilliantly well, but if you're in a qualifying race for the Potemps, you don't want to look like you're finishing off the race very well. He went from the front and, and ran a nice enough race and was comfortably placed. So... Yeah, I, I think this has been a plan for the horse. Get it qualified and then, then keep it fresh. So although the handicap mark doesn't look like it's got much of a manoeuvre on it, I think it's a really interesting horse in terms of profile. And then the last one in there, very quickly, Gal Road, uh, Twist and Davis horse, just solidly running well and not a reason to think it wouldn't run another rail race. There'll be other horses potentially better handicapped than it. It's, it's fairly exposed compared to some of the others. Um, but yeah, that, that was the fourth horse in the plan. I wouldn't necessarily say to you I've got a massive lean on this, but so I've got the four of them in there, all 75p each way. Singles. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> it would be lovely to get some of these handicaps right. I've put a lot of hours into these. <laughs> Whether I'm on the right ones, we'll find out. All right, the Ryanair. Um, I think Envoy Allen's the right favourite. It's a bit short for a single bet. You'll see I've put it in a multiples bet. Um, so I'm going to go two others that I like the look of. Um, so we're going to go for the sponsor's horse. So Ryanair sponsors the race. Ryanair, or the O'Leary's own, conflated. Um, dropping this back. It was one of those ones where it was top class. It's just short of top class. So they're not going to go in the Gold Cup. It, it looks like one of them ones. It's nearly at one where they'll probably send it like cross country or something next year. Because um, that's what he does with all of his, his chases just after they've peaked. Um, but... It, it goes well from the front and I'm, I'm not really, I'm not too worried about the drop down in trip um, from a speed point of view because it goes well in front. It's, it's, it's unexposed in a distance like this. So I think it's an interesting horse. Um, and on ratings wise, in terms of like the quality of the horse, it runs a lot of decent races. Um, and then we're going to go protector out, which has it's been a bit of a plan for mine for a while. Um, I've been looking at this going for the Ryanair. They run this horse a lot. Um, and again, you know, well, the one dropping down a little bit in distance, um, but it, it's a pretty honest horse, to be honest. I mean, we're talking about skeletons. I've got quite a few skeleton horses, but um, yeah, it, it, unlike Lagadan, this horse runs to, to its merit most times. Um, and again, I, I think it, it's, it definitely looks like, it, you know, a horse that should be in easily in the top five. There's some bookies paying top four for places. Everyone else is free. So, yeah, it's a fairly solid each way one for that. The Magonian Stayers, uh, there's three former winners. Tiu Pu clearly is the, the, the obvious favourite. Again, put it in a multiples bet, left it out of singles, too short for a single for me. Um, so I'm going with the with the other experienced members of the team. Of the, of the, I say this, uh, yeah, so we've got, I haven't gone with Saida Burle, um, but what I am doing is uh, Floor Importer. Uh, I backed that the two times it won, I think if you look at the profile of the horse, it, a lot of people will get put off because they've tried it chasing this year and it's not, not turned out. Um, but what this horse does need to, to do to run well at Cheltenham is usually for fresh. And I think last year, the the sort of the run up to Cheltenham, the, the signs were it wasn't it wasn't in, in the same sort of form. So I think if, you've, if it's had better prep this time, you could see it bowling along at the front. Um, there's going to be a bit of competition for the lead. But I think, I think it was worth it. And then may, maybe there's a little bit of heart involved in Paisley Park. But again, an absolute honest horse runs its heart out. And, you know, this horse will either frame and everybody would rejoice or it will absolutely flop because it's knackered after a tough season and, and that'll be it and we won't see it again. But I want I want to be on it um, because it's it's... Yeah, it's a quality horse. I mean, it's, something, it's the sixth time it's run the stairs hurdle, which is quite incredible. Won it five years ago. So, you know, do I think this horse is likely to win? I don't think so. But for four places, it's a good each way bet. And there's a few you see in between these and Tiupu. I just wasn't keen on. I'm not keen on Crambo. I know it's a progressive profile horse, but I don't just didn't like... like I, it, It's still got improvement to go. And, yeah, I, I'm not convinced about it. Um... And Noble Yates, uh, I know it ran really well last time, but from a weights point of view, it's it's now um, level weights, uh, whereas it was got six pounds from Paisley Park last time. So, 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced about that one from a win perspective, and it's too short for me for an each way. So those are what I'm going with, and then we go to the trust to trader plate. Got three against the field in this one. Uh, shake him up, Harry. This has been running competitively in these sorts of races. There's there's a couple in there. There's like this one, um, Il Wadoto. Just have a little bit of a question mark on um, Paul Nichols' horses. I mean, I, I hope he proves me wrong on Thursday, but I had a look few, through a few of them. And just, I know he's not got an issue like Henderson's got an issue. And, and just to be clear, we'll go back to the Potemps. If it wasn't for the fact that Henderson's stables clearly got some virus going around or something... I'd probably be all over the Henderson horses and the Potemps and I've left them all. So I literally just ignored the horses. Um, but some of them really were handicapped in, in there. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wanted to avoid Paul Nichols. I just have a bit of a niggly that, it, that is, he doesn't try too many horses at, um, at Cheltenham. I just, just got a, yeah, a feeling that they are not running to form. Uh, so we're going Rian, 18 to 1. We backed it last time. It was second at 50 to 1 in Ireland. Um, I still think there's a movement in that. It was a good quality handicap. And then I'm going to take a chance on Venetia's horse bouncing back, Ferrero Bamboo. It, it's a bit inconsistent, but on its day, it's, it's very well handicapped, that horse. So I wanted to keep that on side. So they're all 75 p each ways. No singles on the Mayor's Novice Hurdle for, for the single plan. And then in the Kim Muir, I've got four against the field here. Um, Amorite um, is a De Bromhead horse. Um, it's it's running the right sort of prep races that you'd want to be seeing in here for a horse from Ireland. Um, it's got a jockey, knows how to win these sorts of races. Um, uh, so, yeah, lot, lots going in its favour and, and it's still progressing. Daily Present is my slight lean in this race that is my slight lean i don't have a horse of the day to be clear but in this race daily present is my slight lean uh dom and mary uh i've backed that before and i think i wanted to keep that one where uh, with me and fakir delen um this is another elliot horse um that i think a price um could run a decent race again from a jockey who, who's got some good experience in running in some of these sorts of races so uh, that is the four. They're all 75p each way. All right. Hopefully some of the X spaces will be useful, even if you don't agree. And then six combo bets. Um, so it's 24.50 on the singles. And then it's 17.50. I think that's right. 17.50. So it's the most I've done all week on the multiples because I've got six multiples. Here's the each way acker. We're going uh, Grey Dawning, uh, and you'll see this is the horse that's in a couple of bets. Uh, and I, I'll butcher the name. I apologise to any Irish viewers. Um, Gauth Coyle. I just, yeah, my, my Gaelic heritage, um, my, my ancestors just looked down and just in shame, I think. Um, that's the 210. The 250 Protect Karat, 330 to Yupu, 410 Shake Em Up Ari, 450 Jade de Grugy. 55p just that was the bit to round it up 55p each way six fold so we only get anything back if we can get them all framing um and then two win bets so we've got a win trixie uh i think this is the, well, a lot of people it's probably the fairly obvious bet but um yeah I haven't done singles on these. I think they're the right favourites. So this is the kind of, they're the right favourites. Want to keep them on side bet. 130 Facile Vega, 250 Envoy Allen, 330 Yupu. 50p win Trixie on those three. And then I've got a win combination bet. So two win bets. So Grey Dawning, my pick um, in the Turners. 250 Conflated, uh, 15 to 2. Uh, bear in mind I've taken SP prices. And then the 450, the Mayor's Novice, I've split. The, the two horses, I don't think there's much between them and I can't see anything coming to beat either of them. So um, that's what we've got for the combination bet. So it's five times 50p win doubles and two times 50p win trebles. £3.50 is the bet for that one. So that's £2, that's £3.50. So you put all four in your bet slip and it'll tell you there's 50, uh, five, sorry, five doubles and two trebles. If you're writing this out in a for a bet in the shop, you do it like that. Um, and total it at 350. So that's that one. And then combo double. I'm going three and three today. I've gone a big one. Um, so the 210, the 410, the 210, uh, Gauth Call, uh, Gal Road, and Flight Deck going on to the 410, 
Shake 'em Up Harry, Rian and Ferrero Bamboo. Nine times 25p each way doubles. That's 450 as you bet. That's nine possible combinations of them doubling up. And then the two each way combination bets. So we've got each way Trixie. So we're going 210 Prairie Dancer, 330 Flooring Porter, 530 Fakir Delen. That's 25p each way Trixie. Two pound is the bet. And then the main Yankee for the day is this 210 Farouk Delen, 16s, 250 Protector App, 410 Rian, and 530 Daily Present, 20p each way Yankee. That makes you up to £42. Please bet what you can afford. If you haven't got the cash, don't do it. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You, you can literally play along at home. Part of the, what we do on the channel here is about community people sharing their own tips um and yeah and so as i did yesterday again i just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's following along i know there's not everyone's a fan and i you know i know some people are super frustrated i'm massively frustrated um to be to be kind of where we are in the last two months um and i'm i'm trying my best the, as the wind changed, I, I, I don't know. I, what I'm saying to you is, from a Valley perspective, those first two days at Cheltenham have been the worst, uh, in, at least the last 10 years, because there is not big prices going in in the way that there, there often is the case. I know there's been a few prices placed and stuff, and there was, there, was a, there was a few knocking about. Some of them, I would say, are very hard to come by, uh, certainly on Wednesday. So, yeah, thank you for everybody who's supporting the channel, who's liking. If you've subscribed the last couple of days, thank you very much. Um, and if you're writing any comments, uh, expressing your view or whatever, then, yeah, I really, really appreciate it. I, I haven't got time at the moment. Or I haven't had time to reply to lots of things. Um, so I'm doing my best to read everything. I just haven't got to round to read uh, replying to all. So thank you very much. I will try my hardest for the last video for Friday to be much earlier than this one uploaded. Yeah, I just kept going back through those handicap uh, races and just, yeah, trawling through. When, when, when you get clear on what the ground is and when you get clear on which stables are, re, are in a nice place or not, then, then it sort of influences your choices a little bit. So, yeah, it's not like you have to go back from scratch, but you do have to kind of go back through and, and reassess what you, were, what you were thinking. So that is that. All right, I'll be back, win, lose or draw, to try one more day tomorrow. Let's hope that Thursday is our day. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.